Hey everyone, my name is Major Joshua Cabo Gunnarsson, I'm the commander and demo pilot of the F-22 demonstration team uh, based here at Langley Air Force Base in uh, Hampton, Virginia. And today we're gonna break down the F-22 demonstration move, uh, maneuver by maneuver and kind of give you some insight and some background to each maneuver. So setting the stage as we roll through this, we're uh, flying this recording in Singapore, uh, which is our first show of the season. As you can see here, obviously a beautiful uh, sky, beautiful water, uh, a really unique opportunity for us to go out to a foreign country and kick off the season that way. The first maneuver you're gonna see here is a vertical pull uh, with the jet going all the way up to 90 degrees, nose high. We're pulling out five or so Gs in this one. Um, and you can see the jet uh, climbs really well, even heavy weight on takeoff. We'll finish it up with this over the top maneuver um, and it's a high alpha loop. So as we're doing that, we're probably dropping all the way down to 100 knots of airspeed or less, uh, probably even less than that, as we're using the flight controls and the vectored thrust to pivot the aircraft uh, in the sky and then flip over the top. As we finish this maneuver, we're gonna point straight down to the ground uh, and then look to start a uh, aileron roll uh, and then position away from the crowd. Next maneuver here is the minimum radius turn. So this is gonna be just representing what uh, it looks like from an F-22 perspective uh, to do a max G minimum radius turn. We'd use this in combat to outturn uh, an adversary aircraft uh, and using the, uh, obviously the thrust to weight ratio of the F-22, uh, when we take off, we actually have more thrust than we weigh on the ground. So our ability to turn really quickly and really tightly uh, is, uh, is pretty much unmatched uh, across the, uh, the fighter community. Sweet. So now we get into this maneuver here, the Cobra. Uh, this is probably one of the most controversial maneuvers that, uh, that we've seen reviews on in terms of uh, people reaching out from, uh, from our following. And the Cobra maneuver uh, is defined in our, in our regulations. So that's what the maneuver is uh, named. And um, one of the biggest things we've noticed is that people will compare this to a flanker uh, Cobra maneuver. Uh, if you ever watch a flanker do the Cobra maneuver, the uh, airplane's basically gonna stop, lose all of its energy, point its nose backwards, then flop over, and then fall out of the sky. Uh, the F-22, we have the ability to basically take our nose and go behind the tail, so we're actually gonna put our nose behind the tails, and then we're gonna power out of it and climb pure vertical here. So instead of just falling over and then falling towards the ground, we're actually using our thrust to continue climbing the vertical for the next maneuver. This is probably about a uh, minus one and a half G push, uh, or so to get back to wings level. And the next maneuver here, you're gonna see here is a uh, J-turn reposition is what we call it. It's actually uh, called the Herbs Maneuver. That's how it was actually defined initially. Uh, and it's basically for any kind of uh, jet that has a, uh, a uh, post-stall maneuvering ability. So our jet with the flight controls uh, and the, and the uh, thrust vectoring has the ability to continue to fly and maneuver the aircraft. Actually, actually not really flying, but um, still maneuver the aircraft, complete control even when it's post-stall. So the aircraft is no longer producing effective lift to fly the airplane anymore, but it's still gonna pivot around a piece of sky uh, as you're seeing here in the J-turn reposition. We'll get down to like 20, 25 knots and that one which is pretty cool. Uh, the next maneuver there is the weapons bay door pass. So you can see we have uh, two main weapons bays that are gonna carry the AMRAMs or any complement of the bombs. And then on the side of weapons bays, we have a uh, side storage for the AIM-9s, the heat-seeking missiles that we carry as well. Quick little reposition. All right, so this is dedication pass. This is like absolutely 100% my favorite maneuver in the entire demo. Um, and the reason behind that, it's not anything crazy cosmic in terms of performance, uh, but the dedication pass is specifically uh, geared towards all the men and women who have served in the armed forces, have paid the ultimate price um, and not made it home to their family. Uh, and friends uh, protecting us and allowing us to keep living our you know our lives as we do uh, in a free country, uh, which is which is incredible. So, not only do we do the pass, uh, we also synchronize with timing and music. And the song we play for it is actually a um, a uh, song by Granger Smith called "We Were There" or "They Were There," excuse me. And uh, it's that song is dedicated to uh, five specific uh, armed forces members and their families who are Gold Star families, meaning they didn't make it home from uh, the AOR or the Area Responsibility. And uh, it's just, it's one of those passes to me that uh, invokes a lot of emotion because uh, of the meaning behind it. It's also a great opportunity for people to get pictures of the jet uh, as it's passing in front of the, uh, the crowd there. Rolling into the, uh, the pedal turn here, 
So as we do the pedal turn, we'll pull straight up in the vertical to 90 degrees nose high, and then we'll do a, a 360 aileron roll, and then once you finish that, we'll do another high off a loop, just like on takeoff, so pulling back to where we're you know, less than 50 knots over the top, and the jet's still under complete control. And then we'll level out, as you'll see here in a second, uh, where the nose is back to the horizon, and then we're using uh, full pedal and stick in the direction of turn, and we're at 60 plus alpha. What that means is that our angle of attack is greater than 60 degrees, uh, and uh, the jet basically is just falling, but under complete control using the uh, vector thrust and the uh, the rudders uh, and the uh, the stabs in the back there. Unlike other aircraft to do pedal turn, uh, the ability of the flight controls and the vector thrust keep our nose pretty high, so we're able to stay pretty flat as we're doing this pedal turn as we're falling towards the ground there. This one's pretty awesome, the, uh, the power loop. So this is where we're really maximizing and, and capitalizing on that vector thrust capability here. So we'll start this maneuver about 1,500 feet uh, above the ground. And then as we top out at the very top of that loop, we're at 3,000 feet. So we've actually doubled our altitude there. And the jet will then at the top basically flip around one piece of sky using the vector thrust capability of the aircraft and then get back to level flight uh, as we roll in for the, uh, the loaded roll. Uh, next. This is probably the maneuver that showcases the vector thrust capabilities of the aircraft and just the raw power of the jet, uh, unlike any other maneuver we do. It's the loaded roll, uh, which um, honestly is pretty neat in the sense that we fly this uh, up to 36 alpha. So uh, we're flying this close to the lift over drag limit of the aircraft, so you know above uh, a certain AOA or angle of attack, we're no longer producing lift, which means the airplane's no longer flying. So we're flying this right at that limit and getting a nice big barrel uh, as we complete this maneuver on the backside there. This is always a crowd favorite, the, uh, the tail slide. So you kind of miss a little bit in the video in terms of the entry, but uh, we'll fly this typically in American shows, we'll fly this right over the crowd and then pull straight up in the vertical. Uh, for international shows like Singapore, we weren't able to fly behind the crowd or over the crowd, so we staged this from in front of the crowd uh, and then entered this tail slide. As we enter the tail slide, I'm bringing the thralls all the way back to idle power. The jet's gonna hold up there and maintain that attitude uh, up nose high, and then the jet's eventually gonna run at airspeed, be post-stall, so it's no longer flying, and it's falling straight backwards uh, and under complete control once again based on the, uh, the flight control. So you see in, the, in this video here on the right side of the screen, the stabs are completely, you know, like dancing around. It's pretty neat to, um, to see that from the ground perspective. In the air, I'm super focused on just the, uh, the HUD or the heads-up display to see the parameters to make sure everything is safe because uh, especially with relative wind and things that are happening in the environment could impact the tail slide a little bit. So I'm just you know, constantly watching that to make sure that uh, all the parameters are met and the, uh, we get an effective tail slide out there. All right, slow speed pass uh, down to 75 knots, which is really slow. And you think about a you know 60 plus thousand pound airplane going that slow is pretty crazy. Uh, then we'll power out of that. So once again, from 75 knots, using all the uh, 70 thousand pounds of thrust the airplane uh, has to power straight up in the vertical uh, and climb up for a split S reposition. I'm doing about 45 degrees now as high out of that and climbing max AB. And then we're looking for 4,000 feet and 200 knots uh, for our target parameters to complete that split S maneuver. As we come out of the vertical, we're looking to set up for the high speed pass, uh, which is gonna be all the way up to 0.94 Mach, uh, shooting about 600 knots or so, um, which is uh, below the speed of sound there. Six, speed of sound is about 621 uh, at sea level, depending on uh, some you know, atmospheric environmental considerations, but just below the speed of sound, and then looking to climb strip in the vertical, showing just the acceleration piece of the Raptor. Uh, and to be quite honest, uh, this jet, accelerates unlike any other airplane in the world. Um, I mean, going from 350 knots to 600 knots happens pretty quickly. Um, so uh, we started climbing there in the vertical to, uh, to start slowing down the airspeed a little bit to uh, maintain that uh, control over the aircraft. This is the uh, Hoover pitch. So the maneuver itself is dedicated to uh, Bob Hoover, who is an absolute legend in aviation uh, history, especially in air show history across the United States. And uh, this maneuver is a knife edge separated by an inverted tuck, and then another knife edge separated by another inverted tuck on the backside. So it's a pretty neat maneuver, and uh, this is like the last maneuver we do at the air show. And as you can imagine, with a lower and lower fuel weight as you burn gas, you can definitely get to a lot of Gs on this backside because the jet's accelerating. You're in max AB, it's very light. Um, and I've probably hit the most Gs in any demo uh, in this maneuver specifically.
You can kind of see a little bit of a shake in the camera there. It kind of is a quick little indicator of how violent that maneuver can be. Not necessarily violent, I guess that's a bad word to use to describe it, but uh, it definitely is uh, pretty aggressive uh, in terms of the maneuvering. You're holding the knife edge and tucking underneath, and uh, the jet, like I said, is just accelerating like crazy. Uh, so you're using G uh, in those turns to bleed the airspeed back down to keep the aircraft under control and not get too you know on the crazy train in terms of uh, G and airspeed. Try to line this maneuver up so that way you see the afterburners right on the crowd center so people can see that. This is a pretty neat perspective for people to see, especially when those things are lighting right in front of them. So that kind of wraps up the uh, the demo in terms of maneuvers themselves. We hope you guys enjoyed play-by-play uh, -play of all the maneuvers in the demo, and uh, we really look forward to hitting the uh, air show circuit as soon as possible, uh, as soon as possible uh, this year to kick off our 2020 season here in the United States of America. So thanks so much for wa watching. Stay tuned, uh, and uh, as always, thanks so much for your support, Raptor Nation.